Friends, our gospel lesson says this, For judgment I have come into the world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. So far, our text. I want to ask you a question. Where is the darkest place you have been? And I'm not just talking about like physically or spiritually, but I just want you to think for a moment. Where have you been that has been completely dark, and there is no light whatsoever. This is the entrance to King Hezekiah's temple. A while back, I was able to go with some friends, and we backpacked through Israel. It took a month. And a little tidbit that you need to know about me is I am very cluster. Phobic. Even in an elevator, I get like this. So my friends convinced me, Clark, this will be awesome. You should come. Go. We got flashlights. We'll be here. We'll, we'll, we'll get you through this. Okay? Now, you might go, ah, it's not that big of a deal. But if we go to and see, I want you to understand that it is the... Tunnel right here, this is where I entered up here on the right. Down here on the left, that pool, that's the pool of Siloam where the blind man from our lesson is going to be bathing in. I want you to pick a dot somewhere in the middle. Can you, can you pick a dot? Because this whole area is about five and a half football fields long. In some areas, it is about three feet deep in water. And in some areas, it's about just a little around a foot, foot and a half wide in a tunnel. Now, do you have a spot picked out somewhere in the middle? I wish I could make this up. But right there, wherever you pick in the middle, is when all three of our flashlights went dead. I am breathing heavy. But my friends understanding my claustrophobia talked very calmly and said, just Clark, stay close and listen to our voice. That was the darkest place physically I have ever been. So much so that when I came out by the pool of Siloam and I saw the daylight, I was like, oh, praise Jesus, that I even went and bought one of those overpriced t-shirts that said, I survived King Hezekiah's tunnel. But what about you? Where is the darkest place you have been? Maybe you'll say, well, I was out. I've heard stories of people saying that they stayed out a little late for deer hunting and kind of lost track of the time, and then they were turned around in the woods and didn't know where they were at. We have stories like that, but what about now spiritually? Where, where are we at? Maybe we could say, well, we're, we're in a pretty dark place with the things that are going on in our life, or dare we even say that the world and society is trying to put us in a, in a dark place. So where do we go? Where do we look? Friends, we have one place to look, and that's to Jesus, who is our light. We're going to see, first of all, that he is the one that tells us how great his word is, and he is the one that gives us the comfort for our hearts when they're aching. Take a look at that first verse. Now, if you were to go to Jerusalem, even today, to to the old city, it's kind of cool. Imagine uh, like what our farmer's market here is in West Bend, but a very small or scaled-down version. You walk the streets of Jerusalem, cobblestone, and you will see vendors, vendors, you will see beggars, you will see blind. And that's the scene that Jesus was coming upon when he was walking the streets. And what's interesting is the disciples, right, had a, a misunderstanding about some things. They asked this question, who sinned when they were referring to the blind man? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Did you see the flaw in the thinking? 
They're thinking that, well, God must have punished that person, and that's why, or, or there is something that he did that he deserved to be blind. I know a while back, a TV show, it was called My, My Name is Earl, where he was the guy that was trying to set karma straight. And, and we have that thought today sometimes that seeps into our own minds. Now, now don't get me wrong. If I do something and there's a direct consequence, that makes sense. Like if I'm a a a three-a-pack-a-day smoker and I get cancer, well, I guess I saw that coming, right? But I cannot, we cannot give the same principle like the disciples here and say, well, because um, I was mean to my wife and kids at breakfast, I, I, I got stopped by the cops here and that, you know, and as I'm getting the ticket handed to me, I say, well, that's what I get for being mean. That's not the way we think. Jesus puts it very clearly. He says, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. If you understand what Jesus is saying, he's like, guys, no. God had a greater purpose in this so that his greatness could be shown. We could apply it to say when when Adam and Eve sinned, he he didn't just say, I'm done with you, but he gave the promise of the Savior because he had something bigger and better in mind. So, the application. Jesus wanted to open the eyes of the blind, physically and spiritually. Now, we see the Pharisees in this story. They are going to be refusing to see Jesus, right? Right? They're, they, they are caught up in their own man-made laws and traditions. The disciples, their faith, like us, will need a jolt. The blind man is physically and spiritually going to get sight. But now what about us? Do we ever have the whys that creep into our thinking? Why is this happening to me? Why, Lord, if I'm a follower of you, why did you allow this to happen? And we blind ourselves to see who God is. We blind ourselves to see His greatness. We then become walking with fear and letting that and the voices, as you heard me say to the young children, those voices become louder than the one voice that said to you, it is finished. We win. Sins are forgiven. Heaven waits. That, my friends, shows the greatness of God. So when we have the why moments, and and they come and they are coming and they will come and continue to come, that we don't focus on the noise. Focus on the light and the greatness of that light. But it also helps our hearts, too. And when we look at this, I want you to think for a moment from the blind man's perspective. Just put yourself in the blind man's sandals. You can see. Imagine, if you would, you are at a a party and someone tells you, cover your eyes, i got something very important to show you, right? And then you take your, your, your hands off your eyes and there you see a pile of dirty laundry, rusty car parts, Brussels sprouts. And you're like, this is not what I had expected. Couldn't you say that about the blind man? He, he, he's able to see. So the, the leaders of the church, the Pharisees, bring him in, and he's excited to tell them about how he can see. And what do they do? <laughs> You're out. But the one place that he could go was to Jesus, who calmed his heart and pointed him to the true light. When we think about our lives and the the fact that we as Christians have moments of weakness, we can look at these words. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Well, who is He? 
Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus says to you and to me these very words too. He says, you have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. The Lord is the one that speaks to us through his word. The Lord is the one who encourages us through his sacrament. Strengthens our faith. Like the crust that comes off our eyes in the morning or or the scales that come off the blind man's eyes that we may see Jesus as our Savior. That when our hearts sink, He is our strength. By nature, we're blind. By nature, our hearts cannot come to Jesus in any way, shape, or form. It is only through the Gospel that the Holy Spirit calls us. As we think about our life, we can still continue to go through life with the blindfold on, and I ask, what voices do we listen to? What voices will dictate our decisions? What voices will will be the basis of our marriage, our, our schooling, our friendships? One voice. Jesus. The same Jesus who says to you and to me, come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The same Jesus who says to you, again, here, I am the light. We won't get a t-shirt when we walk through life here that says you survive, but you'll get a robe of righteousness that never fades or perishes. So walk in the light, bask in the light, because it is the light of Jesus and the light of Jesus alone that gives us hope.